I'd like to call to order this meeting of the Monroe County Stormwater Management Board. It's Wednesday, June 14th. And the first order of business is public input for items not on the agenda. And we have several people here on Zoom. Does anyone, if you'd like to make some public comment, please raise your hand. Okay, um, seeing none, we'll move on to approval of the minutes. I move approval on the minutes from, I was looking at this earlier, honestly, it was April 12th. Uh, April. From, from, um, April. April 12th, 2023. Second. All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Motion carried. Um, the next order of business is the Monroe County Stormwater, no, Solid Waste Conservation District. I can, there are so many things that start with SW. And this one's the Soil um, and Water Conservation District. Um, let's see. So we do have um, the SWCD on Zoom. There they are. Hi, Hannah and Mark. And Hi, Hi. Can you guys hear us? Yes. yes. Okay, wonderful. Um, so yes, the Soil and Water Conservation District. I'm Hannah Martin, the Resource Conservation Specialist. And I'm Martha Miller, the District Manager. So I just wanted to give a little bit of an update on the mini grant, um, the Stormwater Partnership Grant. I have um, taken it for 2022 and 2023 numbers. So we had a total of 72 site visits that were relative to stormwater management. Um, so that's a large variety of things that can be people who have production to uh, people who have backyard drainage issues. Um, we had 37 apply for the grant in that timeline. 10 are currently active. So those are people who are approved but are still working on it. And we've had 17 paid out. So I feel like those are really great numbers and the need for it and the people are starting to increase. So I get a lot of requests a week. I completed Three site visits yesterday for two people also interested in applying. So we're getting more interest. And we just, uh, another quick side note is um, we do have an interactive watershed map now on our website that um, anyone can go to. We'd like to show it to you really quickly. Um, we're excited about the watershed projects that will be happening here through the district. Um, we have been approved for the 205J for Beam Blossom to revise that plan um, so that we can go after implementation again. And we just filed the NOI to apply for planning for the Indian Creek, which is down south. So this is our website, and if you go to If you go to it, you can click on the watershed map. And you can click on it any place in there and scroll to actually like where you're specifically at, but you can click on the watersheds themselves and it'll tell you what it is and kind of a little bit about it. Oh. <laughs> Would you be able to share the link in the chat? Absolutely. It's, yeah, it's just off of our website, yeah, so we can share that link for sure. So you can, um, I built this and put, we went live about I don't know, two weeks ago with it. Um, and um, it'll be a real good tool as we see Bean Blossoms, probably the largest land mass in Monroe County, and then Lower Salt Creek is next. Um, Creek's not a lot in Monroe County, but we are the headwaters, which is the red one. Yeah, right there, that's Indian Creek. So, yeah. 
So stay tuned and follow our website to see all of our updated watershed work. Um, any questions? I, I'll take the opportunity just to say thank you for being here. And uh, I got your email, Martha, and it's just been a busy day, so I'll be uh, following up with you tomorrow. But I, I think what you're showing uh, with your watersheds and maybe uh, other assistance that we could hopefully provide in the future can really kind of help uh, your efforts there. So, um. Awesome. Um, I also want to say that um, the more I get out there, the more positive things I hear about the stormwater department. Um, a lot of really great things about Kelsey. Always hear a few things about Erica in a positive light and Adam sometimes sends me some people over too. So it's really nice getting out there and being on site and listening to people talk about how good of work we're doing. Um, and I think the more we do it, the more message gets out there and the more people talk about it. So it's really neat. Thank you very much. Um, the watershed map is really interesting. I'm definitely going to be checking that out. Uh, any further questions? No. Then our next order of business is an MOU with Friends of Lake Monroe for an outreach program, $13,000. I move that we um, approve this agreement with the Friends of Lake Monroe for sum of $13,000. Second. Second. Thank you. Ms. Petonia? Yeah, so Maggie Sullivan uh, wasn't able to be here today, but this is essentially the funding that the board approved at our last meeting in April. Uh, we received a presentation from Maggie Sullivan from Friends of Lake Monroe on their outreach program and the septic system voucher program specifically that this funding will be used for. And so this is a mem memorandum of understanding so that we are able to uh, pay them. And so we have written terms this MOU. Dave Schilling uh, reviewed it and had no comments. Um, so we have the appendix that covers um, in, in wording their request and what they're going to be using the funding for. Thank you. Are there any questions? I don't have a question, but I was just meeting with people that were talking about the E. coli in Lake Lemon and that they had done some in-depth research on this and half or more of the E. coli is sourced from humans that's in Lake Lemon. And so I think that trying to take care of these septic systems becomes really important. It's also important for the watershed that's in Lake Monroe. It's important for the other watersheds that we have that were just shown on this map. So um, I'm, I'm very much want to see this in place. And the folks I was just talking to said that also that even though this $150 per household doesn't cover the cost of, the, of a full cleaning uh, of a septic tank. It at least motivates people to get it done. And just even receiving the letter reminds people that it's something that they have to pay attention to. That's a good point, yeah. Uh, no, I absolutely agree. Yeah. It would be interesting, you know, um, how we could expand this effort uh, to address, you know, uh, maybe Lake Lemon watershed um, to encourage them as well. Um, so, uh, yeah, I just really kind of support what you just said and think that it's a great effort by the county to really get out there and, you know, get a health check on people's septic tanks. Yeah. Right. I remember Maggie saying a lot of people didn't even want the assistance as far as the dollars. They were just happy as a reminder and kind of went through kind of getting a health check on their septics without getting any kind of funding from this program. So that's pretty cool. Well, and, and I think also that we have to um, we have to remember that the last two summers, people that had Lake Monroe's their water supplies have um, had a different taste come through the water <laughs> each summer. <laughs> so, yes. yes. I, I guess that's one of the advantages of a well. It always <laughs> tastes bad. 
I think they have common? filters for things like that. <laughs> yeah, the wells destroy them. <laughs> Do you mind if I briefly comment on no. your, your comment about Lake uh, Lemon? So uh, Martha did mention that she has received funding for the Bean Blossom Creek Watershed Management Plan rewrite. So we could, you know, look more closely at Lake Lemon water quality when writing that plan. So thank you, Martha. Yeah, that's very helpful. Thank you. It, it'd be interesting if Martha would like to present on the Bean Blossom watershed uh, at some point. I remember participating in that, and I'm not sure if it really became an official group or if it's still kind of an informal group trying to, you know, uh, get people together to really kind of recognize um, that watershed. Um, I remember writing a letter of support, but that was the last involvement I had. So any update would be yeah. um, tremendous. Martha has her hand raised. I'm sorry. Martha has her hand raised. Oh, awesome. We can, we can do that, Sean. We'd be, I'd be more than glad to. The history of that particular watershed goes way back. So um, probably what you're thinking of is the one where we did the 600 um, we had a three nineteen, a six hundred and sixty thousand dollar three nineteen grant for implementation up there back probably fifteen years ago. So, but yeah, I'd be glad to give an update on all of that. Any timelines? Great. Yeah. Great. So, we we anticipate getting full clearance from IDEM in probably November December to begin the process for this particular round. So we'll regather our. Um, support team and start yeah. putting together um, a group to move forward and figure out what plan. I'd just like to add one other additional thing and it's kind of a part of the CDO um, discussions and the plan commission where they do want to identify like uh, lemon watershed um, and maybe kind of tuck that into the eco uh, overlay. So environmental overlay. Um, mm -hmm which would be incredible. So I, I think this would be a perfect time to kind of start identifying, you know, areas that are of issue in that watershed. So just wanted to add that last comment. Thank you. Yes, certainly Lake Lemon has been in need of uh, attention for quite some time. <laughs> um, is there any public comment on this item? And seeing none, all in favor of the MOU with Friends of Lake Monroe for an outreach program for 13,000, please say aye. 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 And our next item of business is our draft 2024 budget for stormwater. Okay. So this is the draft budget. I will be bringing this to you at our July meeting for approval ahead of our August deadline. Um, so this is just the initial discussion um, and I'll go through mostly everything with you and we have the major changes noted in the column to the right. Um, so salaries will follow the salary ordinance. And so that is not something that we have much say over. Um, let me zoom out a little bit. Okay, first I'll start with the 20s, so our supplies. Um, the main increase we see in the 20s is for fleet maintenance. Um, we just went for an additional for fleet maintenance for this year because we had some significant work to do on our grade all, especially this year. And we saw mid-year that we were approaching, uh, we're, gonna, we're gonna be pretty tight this year. So we needed extra funds for that. So, um, so we've increased that, um, especially that's one of the larger things we've increased. Um, let's see. We increased seed and um, straw plantings just a little bit because prices of plants and seed and everything is going up slightly. And that is reflected just from you know, what we've seen in transfers and things in previous years. So just a minor increase there. Everything else is remaining the same. Uh, we did decrease the um, line for signs just a little bit. Um, 
to kind of offset the increase for the seed and everything. Any questions on the 20s? Okay. Going down into the 30s, where a good chunk of the budget is, we have, um, let's see, training and travel. Uh, we, I chose to increase this line quite a bit from previous years. Um, we now have more stormwater staff and requirements from the state to meet certain hourly training requirements. Um, so that has increased and all the conferences are much more expensive than they were a few years ago. Something that used to be a hundred dollar event is now a $300 event, you know, plus hotel room pricing and everything is increasing. So yes, John. So I deployed efforts with uh, training and travel and uh, the surveyor's corner fund. And yes, the increase of that is just continuing to go up and I'm planning on submitting kind of double my request from last year. So I, I personally would think that we should just support that just a bit more to give you flexibility. I know we can do in-house transfers and things like that, but mm -hmm. 10,000 seems kind of tight, honestly, if you try to send more than one or two people to a conference and if you're talking about hotel and then per diem. Um, so I would recommend that we think about increasing that to like 15,000 okay. um, and then if we don't use it all, there we go. But yeah. I, I, it, I think that provides more ease and uh, uh, to send people to uh, these training sessions um, without, worrying that you're going to have to do an in-house transfer and how are you going to budget all the other line items um, yeah i calculated it all out and that's pretty close to what we'll need so we don't have much wiggle room <laughs> oh okay so thank you for that comment but you know i just wanted to make that uh comment that i absolutely agree with um supporting the increase on the travel and training and okay. even a higher increase in the future if, if you know funds are available mm -hmm. thank you All right, software is remaining the same. Um, most of that is for cartograph asset management software. On-call construction services, this is where we pay out. Flagging mostly comes out of this and anything else that we need for our crews um, or any other engineering projects we have. Um, remote monitoring, this is just a bill we receive for the Fieldstone SCADA system. Currently working on redoing that system. So I might need to move things around in the future, but I'm anticipating for next year, I'm gonna keep it um, about the same. And by the same meaning, we had to do a transfer at the beginning of this year so that we had the funding in there this year because last summer I wasn't anticipating the bill we had received. <laughs> so um, last year and this year will be about the same. Maybe in a year or two, it might change. Um, Laboratory fees, we use that for sending off our street sweeping samples every year um, to demonstrate that it can go to the landfill and then any other incidental sampling we do. Disposal fees, disposing of um, street sweepings and other material that we need to dispose of, that's remaining the same. Engineering services, uh, so we contract out design of storm sewer projects in neighborhoods and other, and other projects like that. We'll, we'll keep that the same. We have the hydro seeding line that we created last year. Um, we are increasing it mostly because uh, not only is the cost of hydro seeding going up, but we're paving a lot of roads. <laughs> and I think I did my initial calculations without counting all of the roads we were paving. And so we've had to uh, increase that. I think it'll give us some cushion, but um, that number is just really dependent on how many roads we pave and what the going price is for hydro seeding. Lisa, do you have any comments on that line? No, that's that's good. I know on some of them, I think they say same. It, like I believe on call construction services and hydro seating, um, they could be the same, but we've already gone for an additional for those. I think we went in for a flagging one. So it's the same as even if we had to go for an additional. So you might see a change from last year's actual budget amount. So I just wanted to make sure that, that, that Kelsey's included that those additionals in there. Well, I think too, from what you've told us about the hydro seeding, it actually saves money down the line for other kinds of, of 
upkeep and repairs and that kind of thing too. So this is just an investment in the future. Yeah, it seems to work out a lot better and it's kind of also bringing our con, you know, basically we only have two paving contractors in this area. So it's been a learning curve to write our specs to have them match exactly the way we want them to do the hydro seating. And it's been a lesson learned from us. Um, so, and that does increase the price of it, but we want it done right. We don't want to just put the straw out there and that all end up in the culverts like it has in the past. Thank you, Lisa. And the next one is... Um, I just wanted to mention, and I was able to read the captions, but um, Lisa, your microphone is a little muffled as it comes in here. It's probably crystal clear on Zoom, and I think the captions are fine. I just wanted to uh, let you know that it was a little bit difficult to hear you in the, in the Nate Hill room. Okay, thanks. Um, for maintenance and good housekeeping, this is for um, some of the work we do at the highway facility, um, maintaining uh, all the water quality measures we have out there. So we have some money set aside to help with that. The next one is for professional fees. This is where we contract out studies and um, other type of projects and reports. I increased this one um, from um, previous year we had 50,000, we decreased it because I didn't have any big reports planned this year. We are increasing it again a bit more for next year because we'd like to, um, I guess, contract out a study or report that will help the drainage board and planning department study um, karst in the county where we hope to delineate um, basically creating an overlay where we can better make decisions at the planning level for new development It'll help us um, better regulate and make more clear expectations around sinkholes, as well as delineating new sinkhole conservancy areas. So we're still in the exploratory phase right now where um, we haven't requested proposals from anyone. We've talked to a local hydrogeologist who says it's possible. It might take some time due to the workload and so few people who are locally able to do it. Um, but I'm setting aside some funding so that we could be prepared to take on that study next year, potentially. I just wanted to add one comment, and um, I think this is a, a good first step to continue to address a, a, a broader net of ratepayers, um, because even if this doesn't become kind of an overlay or something like that, um, even if we kind of move to creating this layer it could put people on alert that there is a closed contour. And so before they go through like a, a development process, they might already know that they're going to have these uh, uh, issues or concerns and conservancy area compliances on their property. So I, I think this is a great uh, first step of uh, spreading out uh, uh, some of uh, the fun to a broader uh, scope of ratepayers across the county. So I just wanted to add that one comment. Thank, thank you. And, and this morning, even on a rezone start that we saw, they actually had mapped out where some of the karst features are. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yes. Yeah. So, yeah. Exactly. It's it's. I think it's a great way for adding predictability and what people may get into as they're trying to do things on their property. Yeah. yeah, we've had some good technical discussion with the county drainage board. We have licensed geologists on the board and we've had some really good discussion on how we should be regulating sinkholes from the perspective of water quality and you know protection from land disturbance and uh, development, so. Yes, it was a very interesting discussion, and I'm glad <laughs> to see this in the budget. Okay. okay. Um, moving on, public education participation. So 35,000 of this is what funds the stormwater grants program through the Soil and Water Conservation District. Um, that's staying the same, printing and advertising. Um, a good chunk of that goes to our annual calendar and then other materials that we need to send to a printer for tabling events. Um, fuel is going to remain the same. Remember, we had a big uh, increase in that in the past year or two, so we're going to keep that the same. 
um, let's see, postage. Um, we've increased that slightly just because we had a postcard project that was going to be right up to that amount that we had budgeted. So we wanted a little bit of cushion there in case we wanted to do that again. Um, let's see, the rest of the lines are remaining the same. Um, let's see. Uh, I'll point out refund. We always put aside a little bit of money there in case um, someone pays their stormwater fee and they want to um, they want to appeal it or something like that. Normally, we're not going over that thousand dollars, but it's about that amount each year. We may receive some of those requests. Um, Lake Monroe water quality. So um, we have um, thirty five hundred. That's what. Um, the Lake Mineral Water Fund requests through their MOU for um, water quality monitoring through the Kurtz stream gauge uh, that was started several years back. So that's set aside for that MOU. Let's see. Um, everything else is about the same. Um, we still have funding set aside for Baby Creek and Stip Road and Morris Creek Road projects. Um, and then um, one chained under equipment, I'm requesting a couple of thousand dollars to pay for some confined entry equipment. So I'll be looking to get our crew trained this year. So if we need to enter a manhole or other you know, confined space into the storm sewers, we'll have the proper equipment to do that. It's just an air monitor, tripod and harnesses for the crew. Um, we've also taken in underground detention near I-69 on Wayport Road from the I-69 project, and so we'll be required to inspect that. So I want to do it safely. Okay. Um, this is not meant to be in any way disparaging at all, but since people use their phones for calendars, how many people are actually using the hard calendars and where all do you disperse them? Yeah, so we our main event is the county fair where we will um, hand those out. And uh, we actually did decrease the number we're printing this year. Okay. We used to print a thousand of them and we're, I don't think we're printing that many. And then we usually hand them out at other county offices and leave them available in public spaces. Like we've taken them to you know, the library, um, you know, the courthouse here and other public spaces where people can take them, so. I just wanted to be, make sure they were being used and not going into landfill, that's all. Of course. Right, yeah. And they're filled with um, pictures and other educational information where we share how to report illicit discharges, how to contact different partners, um, you know, things to look out for and other education uh, type information, so. Anything else? Further questions? So are, are you gonna keep the uh, training and travel at the 10,000, or are you gonna increase it per? I, I will look at my numbers again and maybe reevaluate that before the final budget is brought to you. Okay. So I'll talk to Lisa. Just uh, a, a one question, I guess. I'm back in the personnel, and I guess the real reason is my name's up there, and I had 19 years, and I was like, whoa, but in 2024, that'll be correct. So it's like, <laughs> it's only 18 years. Um, Thank you. I didn't know you were that strong. old, Tron. I know. <laughs> Jeez. Um, and then the midpoint hires for 3-3, three, three, is the other ones, those are at midpoints. It's just, I guess, what's the distinction between uh, where it has level 3 and then level 3 MPH? Is that because those are new uh, people coming on board that are at the midpoint? And I would assume all the other ones are at that bump up as well. Do you get my question? I think so, but... So you want me to answer? Thank you, Lisa. <laughs> so you have the option on new um, employees when you hire them to not start them at base uh, due to their qualifications. You have to submit this to personnel services, uh, formerly HR department, and it's up to their discretion to agree with your findings that you can hire a person at that third third midpoint higher, which is also third year, um, and not at the basis. So I guess if I'm following correctly, these are in hopes that we can hire them at the midpoint. The ones that are 
I guess, kind of in the more dark light blue, I don't know, teal kind of we color? Have, we have three that were midpoint hires. Okay. And the, the MS4 assistant, stormwater inspector, and the stormwater crew foreman. So when they came on board, they started at that third year and not base. The other ones that say three, this in 2024, they will be here actually, that's their third year of service and they'll be on that third year bump. Okay. I guess I was just trying to clearly understand and I'm, I don't feel like I'm lost, but I don't know if I still fully understand. So I, I guess I'll just use the title. So we're talking about the MS4 coordinator, stormwater equipment operator will be at the uh, they will midpoint. be in the third year in 2024. They will be. Okay, cool. And then the other ones are in, are to be determined? Is they what? are already. And so... They are uh, already. So, okay. Yeah. To say the MS4 assistants, I'm just going to say, started two years ago. Okay. They have been at the midpoint higher since that higher date because we didn't start them at base due to their expertise level. Oh, okay, so it's not really gonna be a change. I, I think I'm following right. along, okay. That, will go, that midpoint hire will go away once they reach their third year of employment. Okay, perfect, and uh, thank you. I just was kind of scratching my head on that one. Thanks, Lisa. Uh -huh. Any further questions about the budget? Oh. Then let's move on to the stormwater expenditure reports for April and May. So as I've said in previous meetings, I'm actually going to turn this over to Lynette to present since she creates these reports and is heavily involved with our stormwater claims and all the work the crews do, so. Thank you, Kelsey, for inviting me to present the <laughs> monthly budget report, and thank you for listening to me. Um, so we'll go over April, and just so I can get everyone oriented in the same way on the page, I'll kind of just go through the report here. Um, at the top, you have um, the appropriation balance. On the left, you'll have the fund lines, the, then the year beginning appropriation. In the middle is any changes, encumbrances, adjustments, transfers, or additionals. Then you'll have expenditures, which is where I'm gonna mostly go down the line as I'm explaining this monthly budget report. And then the total appropriation is how um, the year beginning appropriation has changed um, up until this month. Then you'll have the appropriation balance and then the percent unexpended. And then in the lower box, there's details for each of the expenditures that occurred during the month. Um, so starting at the top with the field crew supplies, um, you'll see for expenditures, um, the amount was $1,119.86. Um, this is typical supplies that the stormwater crew utilizes for sweeping and making stormwater repairs. Um, fleet maintenance, you can see that this is a high amount and it has been a high amount for the past few months. Um, you'll notice that $10,000 was transferred into this line during April um, for testing and sampling equipment. This was ICE to send our street sweeping sampling um, over to be analyzed as the debris needs to be sampled and uh, make sure it's acceptable to be disposed of at the, um, at, um, the landfill. Um, for pipes, you see there's zero expenditures, but we did transfer $10,000 out of this line and into fleet maintenance. Um, for backfill pavement repair, this is stone material that the stormwater crew use, utilizes, and this is um, typically an, a good amount that they'll use for in the month to um, put stone around at culverts and along ditching. Um, down into the 30s for training and travel, uh, we had two stormwater interns attend the second day of the Elms Conference um, on call contract services. This was for flagging. Um, professional fees, there were no expenditures, but we transferred funds from here into the Lake Monroe water quality. You'll see that we started this year with $1 in that line, so this brought it up to the appropriate amount for um, an MOU with the Lake Monroe Water Fund and with the Friends of Lake Monroe um, MOU that we just talked about today. Um, public education and participation. 
Um, these are for items to hand out at public events, such as the stream cleanup, county fair, and bug fest. Um, gas, oil, and lube, this is a typical expenditure amount for the month. Drug testing, this is routine um, drug testing for our stormwater crew. Lake Monroe water quality, there were no expenditures, but we did transfer funds into this line. Um, and for rental of equipment, we rented a straw blower, or the stormwater crew did. Um, and Baby Creek number three, $1,000 for additional easements um, as a new culvert design required more, a smaller portion of additional property. Um, and then for Stip Road and Morris Creek, that was the first payment towards task order six um, to complete legal descriptions for access onto USA's property. And if you have any questions for the April monthly budget report. <laughs> Just one question, and I think I know the answer. And it's the uh, on-call contract services. It, mm -hmm. We have a 75 beginning appropriation, but then total appropriation, appropriation we have 82. It looks like, was there encumbered dollars there? Yes, okay. towards the beginning of the year. I, mm -hmm. I really like kind of the new <laughs> format, and um, I hope it's easier um, to kind of produce this type of reporting. And thanks for... Uh, volunteering to do this <laughs> you're welcome I, um, I hope it'd be more useful so you can see right. where it started and where it went and then the percentage that we've used so it can kind of give you a better picture of how the funds change throughout the year and i don't know if it would be helpful and it's a small dollar amount but uh, that encumbrance maybe if there was a way to identify it with just a simple asterisk there instead mm -hmm. of parentheses or something to that effect um so that was it. I was just wanting to kind of clarify that since there was kind of a, a discrepancy with the two dollar amounts. So, mm -hmm. But it makes sense because it was encumbered. I will say that in the future, we will not be encumbering funds. We're just going to set the budget at what it needs to be set for that year. So that was what we've been directed to do by Lisa in the future. So you won't have to deal with encumbrances. Sounds perfect since it's a non-reverting fund. And just so I'm clear, um, these total appropriations, they're gonna not be reflected just for that month. They're gonna change over the year. Um, so you wouldn't see that encumbrance here in April. You would see the encumbrance in this data in January, if that makes sense. Okay, I'll go ahead and move on to May. Budget. Um, so for field crew supplies, um, these are were supplies to help mark off areas for hydro seeding, uh, fleet maintenance. Um, we kind of discussed this earlier and we uh, asked for an additional uh, yesterday to be added to this line since you can see the percent unexpended is 22%. So we're almost at the $40,000 cap there. Um, Seed mulch, compost, and plantings. Uh, purchased quite a bit of seed and straw to keep in stock. It's that time of year, and the stormwater crew use a lot of that. Um, pipes, also um, a large purchase of pipes and connecting bands to keep in stock for the stormwater crew. Backfill, pavement, and repair. Um, again, this is concrete mortar, stone, flowable fill um, to, to use for ditching and repair washouts. <coughs> Uh, training and travel. Um, this is for Adam Edwards to attend the American Water Works Association conference. He is a drinking water operator and holds a DSL license that expires in 2024. And so he'd like to continue to hold that license um, is trying to work towards renewal. Um, for on-call contract services, um, this is for flagging um, for April to May and then for tree and debris removal from Remitz Creek. Laboratory fees, these were the fees for that street sweeping sample analysis from the lab. Uh, disposal fees, this is for street sweeping disposal and fill disposal from cleaning out culverts and inlets. Uh, for general engineering services and professional fees, you'll see that we transferred 7,500 out of these lines and put it into hydro seeding for the increased cost for the additional paving and um, the hydro seeding costs. Uh, for gas, oil, and lube, again, this is a typical amount that we have been charged for that each month. And then for the Lake Monroe water quality, this is the MOU for the Kurtz Gauge funding uh, for watering monitor monitoring activities in the Lake Monroe watershed. 
That's all. <laughs> Thank you. Any questions? No, I think we just spent the extra 13000 that was still balanced in the Lake Monroe water quality. <laughs> <laughs> All right, um, and we'll vote on that in July. And any staff reports? I just have a couple updates for everyone. Um, we have our um, audit with the Department of Environmental Management in October. We originally had it scheduled for August, but we had to reschedule it. And so I wanted to let you know that we'll, that will be happening um, at the end of October. Um, I also want to uh, let you know that our summer interns have started. Uh, they're Charlotte McFerrin and Charlie Moore, and uh, they will come here in person maybe for our next meeting. I did not give them enough notice and they were out in the field up until about three o'clock, so I didn't want to make them come in when they weren't ready. So, <laughs> so you will meet them at some point, um, and they're doing great work um, helping us update assets and cartograph and taking on some other education projects. Um, I want everyone to know that our regular scheduled July meeting is going to be canceled, the July 12th meeting. Um, we've rescheduled it for the following week, July 19th. And at that meeting will be our final budget approval. Um, so definitely not on purpose trying to reschedule the meeting. We're approving the budget. So I want to make it very clear we have that rescheduled for July 19th. Um, that'll give the public an opportunity to see it at that meeting. And then, of course, at the formal budget hearings as well, there'll be plenty of opportunity for input. So. I also want to give you a heads up about our September meeting, since it'll come up pretty quickly. Um, Tron and I will be at the ANASM conference that week. So we discussed, I think earlier this year, about either rescheduling that meeting or canceling it. Um, so I will bring that up probably at our July meeting. We can start talking about rescheduling or canceling the September meeting. Okay. Thank you. Okay. And if there's nothing else from anyone, I'll adjourn this meeting. The date of our next meeting will be not Wednesday, July 12th. Sorry, it's the 19th. Uh, yeah, <laughs> Wednesday the 19th yes. at 3 p.m. <laughs>